So today I'm going to talk to you about open access medical education and why it's really crucial for training the next generation of doctors. Um, but first of all, I'd like to talk about Kate Middleton's wedding dress. So on the day of the royal wedding, just hours after Kate Middleton appeared on the balcony, there was already a page on Wikipedia all about her dress. And hours after that, the page had been marked for deletion. And people were saying this page was trivial. And there was a huge debate broke out on Wikipedia, saying whether this page should be kept or removed. And everyone had their own viewpoint on what constitutes a valid entry in the sum of all human knowledge. And even Jimmy Wales waded in this huge debate. And he's saying, well, how come we can have 100 pages for all the different distributions of the Linux operating system, but we can't have a page for the dress at the center of this historic occasion? And that really highlights what I'm going to talk to you about today. And that is that only some information is relevant to only some people and only some of the time. And that's something that's really easy to forget when you're writing a textbook or producing an online encyclopedia. So how do you choose what information is going to be relevant? Or do you just include everything, allow the reader to find that themselves? Well, that's traditionally what's been done, and that's the reason that we've ended up with these 1,500-page textbooks that I have to sift through and find that one paragraph that I need for my exams or for my future career. And I believe that students are in this most privileged position of choosing what information is relevant to us. We're exposed to this huge amount of information through lectures, and then we pick and choose all the information that's likely to be relevant for our careers or likely to be assessed in the future. And we adapt and we mold the information into these formats that we can recall under the pressure of exams. And then really crucially, we share that information because we all want our friends and those around us to succeed as well. So I noticed this in my second year of study. And I noticed that friends were sharing notes with each other. And a lot of them were very colorful and bright and extremely useful and a lot better than any of the textbooks I could have found in the library, for instance. And maybe you've seen this too. After lectures, people are saying to each other, hey, I, I didn't really get that. Can I borrow your notes? So with that in mind, along with some friends, we established MediWikis, which is a platform for medical students to share the information that's relevant to them. So um, we start, we're using the same platform that Wikipedia uses, but we've really tailored it so that students can find the information for their university and then also tap into the knowledge of other universities as well. Um, so why would a medical student contribute to MediWikis or to Wikipedia or to another open, open education platform? You know, we make it really easy and you don't need to know any code or anything like that. But still, students are extremely busy. Why would you write more information on top of revising for your exams, on top of your coursework assignments? Well, I can only really speak for myself and for my friends and those I know who contribute, but they tell me two things. Uh, they tell me, first of all, they understand information a lot better from putting it into a format that other people will understand. And secondly, they say they really enjoy helping out other students in the same position that they're in, as well as those that follow in their footsteps. And students get really proud of the notes that they've put up, and they're really proud to be part of this community and sharing this information. So here's a cute little example. One of our contributors, Gabrielle, produced this cartoon, part of a page on meningitis, and it just shows where the bacteria uh, lodge at the back of the throat that then go on to cause meningitis. And I think it's really colorful and really bright, and it's a nice way of remembering the information. But I think you agree it's not something you would typically find in a textbook. So universities are already providing e-learning resources through websites, through blogs, for their students, but these are really closed and quite exclusive. So how do I, as a medical student in Newcastle, learn from a world-leading immunologist who's based maybe just down in Birmingham? Well, it's just currently it's not possible at all. And open access medical education platforms and open access journals are really doing their part to break apart these silos and share this information out. But I truly believe that students are in the best position to join this information up and share the information across the country. And uh, one example of that comes from one of our contributors, Callum, from Durham, actually. And Callum produced this fantastic guide on the best way to communicate and empathise with a patient. 
See, I bet you didn't realise that doctors had to go through training for that, did you? But he produced this guide, and it meant that students at Newcastle could learn that as well. And I think it's not just about the UK either. Internationally, many medical schools in developing countries completely lack these e-learning resources and don't have these websites available. And there are a few that use it quite effectively, like teleconferencing between doctors and medical students in remote locations. But all of them lack a shared area for students to share the information that's relevant, that they find relevant for them. And I really think this is a two-way conversation to be had as well. I think there are things that UK medical students can learn from medical students in other healthcare settings who each face their own disease burdens and their own challenges as well. And so we're inviting universities from across the world to join MediWikis and share the information that's relevant to them. Um, so I just wanted to close with this. Uh, this was a discussion with uh, Tim Berners-Lee, the founder of the World Wide Web, and someone asked him, what's the best thing to come from the internet? He said it's the spirit of global collaboration amongst all the people working on it. And some other people had some different ideas. But we're trying to uh, improve this spirit of global collaboration and spread it amongst all students so that medical students from across the world can share the information they find relevant and succeed in their careers. Thank you.